Welcome back to Line and Dine TV. Today's video, as you can see, is going to be a little bit different. We're actually doing a kayak tour. So this is kind of my off-season project, what I've been working on over the winter. Um, this new Hobie kayak. So coming from an old town Topwater 106, which is a paddle kayak. Um, and now, as you can see, we've upgraded and moved to a pedal drive. Um, which is really awesome. I've taken this out once or twice, um, you know, kind of it's kind of tough in the winter months since water's a little bit colder. Um, you don't wanna be getting wet, but luckily you don't get wet um, on this kayak here because you're not paddling and splashing water all over yourself. So yeah, today's video, we're just gonna do kind of a quick tour, show you kind of the ins and outs of what I have set up on the kayak, uh, some stuff with the anchor, uh, maybe the electronic system, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, let's start with the drive. So this is a Mirage Drive 180. Um, it comes with this version of the Hobie Compass. This is the 2022. Um, the camo version does come with the turbo fin. So if you look down here, they're just a little bit longer um, and they're supposed to give you a little bit more speed. Not sure how true that actually is, um, but the, you know, the two times that I've had it out, I've been able to hit you know, 4.5 to five miles an hour. I was really paddling hard. So um, you can definitely get some good speed out of this kayak for sure. As you can see here, we have the forward pull and the reverse pull. So if you pull that in reverse, you can see that the fins flipped around backwards. Um, so you get both forward and reverse on this guy, which is really cool. And you know, through the first couple times I've had this out, it's proved to be really helpful when you kind of want to get something on snag, you want to go in a tight spot and you don't have enough room to uh, flip the kayak back around. So yeah, that's it for the drive. Let's move on to the electronics. So the electronics that I'm running on this guy is my same Hummingbird Helix 5 uh, Chirp that I was running on the old Topwater 106. If you saw any of my older videos, it's a great little unit. It really does all that I need it to do. You get really good down scans. You can see uh, weed structure, you can see uh, rocks, you can see uh, logs on the bottom of the water. Just a really good little unit for the price. Um, as you can see here, have both the transducer and the power running down through this little porthole here. If you come down to the bottom, try to get under and get a good angle for you. You can see that little uh, plate there. So that's actually Hobie's little built-in Lowrance uh, transducer protector plate. So if I were to pop that off for you guys, you would see the transducers kind of just mounted face down right up against that plate. And I haven't had any scanning issues with that. Um, I was kind of skeptical at first. Hopefully, um, you know, the transducer would pick up the, the imaging correctly through that little plastic uh, cover, but I haven't had any problems with it so far. All right, up next, let's talk about the battery. So I'm gonna clip this little netting here and I'll show you what I'm running up front. This little circular hatch. So you can see I have uh, just a little motorcycle battery here um, and I don't have it hooked up, uh, but a little fuse with a little waterproof cover. And that's really it, pretty simple setup there. I'm just running this, uh, Kobe makes this little bucket that you can buy, it's like 25 bucks. Probably overpriced, you can probably find something, you know, a little bit uh, cheaper than that, but just for ease of use, and you can see it's kind of, it's not in right right now, but um, it does the trick, and you even on this front hatch get a little bottle opener, which is a cool touch. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show is just some of the accessories that I've added here. You can see we have this little Yak Attack uh, rod holder. This has been really nice just when you're retying or you have a fish on, um, you land them and you just need somewhere to put your pole, but you know it's not gonna fall into the water. Um, you can see here, kind of just twist this thing and it locks your pole into place. So you can just kind of slot it in there while you're messing around with it. So really nice little setup there. Um, also have this little cup holder. Um, the cup holder on the compass, as you can see here, it's not great. Um, it's just kind of, uh, you know, it's not built up on the, the outside. So if you have stuff, it's gonna be kind of rattling around in there. Um, so I initially was gonna use it for that, but what I found kind of a better use for is just to store kind of like my looser tools. So I have my fish grips up here. I got some extra hemostats and I have this little wacky rig tool as well that I kind of just store in there. I know uh, there's some accessories that you can put kind of right on the side, um, like little, I think Burley Pro makes them and you can kind of slot in those little accessories too, but um, haven't got around to adding those yet, but the cup holder works fine for now. Another little cool accessory that I've added is these little Yak Attack uh, rail clips. So as you can see, I'm using the clip on my uh, line clips and then also my pliers, they don't fall in the water. I just have them, you know, kind of on the standard uh, stretch little string there. Um, what they've also been really nice for is actually just tying down my kayak to my truck. So on the old Topwater 106, um, we used to have handles kind of right here and then on the other side that I would use to tie on. Um, but as you can see, this kayak here doesn't really have any tie on points uh, across the body of the kayak. Now you could run it through the actual hole here up by the, the drive if you wanted to take the drive out, but 
Um, I've actually really liked uh, running the uh, ratchet straps through these little clips here. Um, and I haven't had any problems with stability or anything. It's been holding them great, so I guess I'm gonna keep doing it. All right, the next uh, little accessories are actually behind the seat here. So I've added this Perception Kayaks uh, cooler bag. So it kind of just straps on with these bungees to the seat. And you get a nice big area for you to hold your drinks and maybe even some fish if you wanted to keep some. Um, this ran me about, I think, 70 bucks on Amazon. I got it on sale. It's kind of expensive, but um, so far it's, it's actually done pretty well. Keeps my drinks cold all day and I don't really have any complaints about it. So the next thing on the list is these Hobie wheels. Um, now, as you can see here, I've kind of moved the clips up on the Hobie wheels so they don't stick down too far when you go underneath the kayak. As you can see, the actual little nubs, uh, if you don't do that, they kind of stick down a little bit further. I didn't want them to hit rocks because I fish in a lot of shallow areas. Um, so I made that slight little modification. Um, and these are great. Uh, these allow you to, you know, this kayak is pretty heavy, especially for if you're going out by myself. Um, like I do, you know, all the time. Um, it's hard for me to move this kayak around by myself and you know, you don't want to drag this kayak around too much and nick it up. So um, these wheels have been great. I did a, a little mod on those as well that I saw on YouTube and I'll link the video in the description um, if I can find it. But as you can see, these little end pieces here, they actually are not standard. So these are like 10 bucks a piece and they're little ring mounts. And what you actually do is you take this bungee cord here and you attach the clip of the bungee cord to the wheel on the bottom. And then when you pull up the back of the kayak, it will kind of, the tension from the bungee cords will pull up the wheels automatically for you. So you don't have to flip the kayak on its side um, to put the wheels on when you're by yourself. So that's a great little modification there. Um, and let's move on to something else. So the next little thing I have here, or really big thing is probably the biggest thing on the kayak is this uh, Hobie H Crate Mini. Um, I think it's maybe called the H Crate Junior. I can't really remember, but um, it's kind of just a nice little area for me to store other loose stuff. And right now I've added this little cover on top. So it's a zipper cover just to keep everything dry. And I just store my plastics in here for now. And I'm sure this could change, you know, when I kind of tune this setup a little bit more when I start getting out um, a little bit more often this year. But this has been great. It's not fully waterproof. As you can see down here, there is some little gaps that water could get through, but this will probably stay pretty dry. Um, but I wouldn't put anything in here that's, you know, you really need to uh, keep 100% dry. I'd rather move that up to kind of where the battery is. All right, two more accessories back here. I have this Ego net that I found online. It's a really nice net because it's a short handle. You also have this bungee clip uh, on the back. I was thinking about maybe moving this up to the front of the kayak, uh, but I'm just going to have to play around with kind of how I want to locate it. But it's a big enough net and it's also made out of that plastic material. Um, rubber material rather, so you don't get your hooks all snagged up in it. Um, so this is a really nice upgrade from my old net, which is like an old trout net that I used to have. Um, and I actually lost on a trip, so had to get a new net and this is the one I selected. All right, moving on to kind of a safety item here. Added this Yak Attack uh, kind of flag pole and light combo. So this is really nice and I think you're actually required to have this um, if you're out, you know, on a bigger body of water where there's actual motor boats um, at night. So what you kind of do is, it's kind of hard to do with one hand. You have to twist this really hard. Just tighten it down off camera there, but as you can see, the light is now on. It's kind of a weird uh, system. It's not really my favorite. Um, you kind of have to tighten it down really hard to get the light to turn on. It's kind of like a pressure activated uh, system. So, but it does the trick. Um, also has a reflector on the side there too, as you can see. Um, it's a nice little addition. Definitely mandatory if you're gonna be fishing at night on bigger bodies of water. So let's move on to the next thing. All right, so the next thing we have is this uh, loader attachment. So this actually goes on the back of the kayak when you want to slide it out of your truck. Kind of how it works. Kind of just sits, sits right up in that area. And this strap actually goes around the rudder on the back of the kayak. Basically what this is doing is just protecting your rudder when you take it off the truck. Um, as you can see here, the first time I launched this kayak, I didn't actually have this attachment and I tried to be super careful, had the wheels on it and I still scuffed up the rudder a little bit. The second time I launched the kayak this year, had this attachment and did not scuff the rudder up. So definitely worth this little attachment here. Um, I think this ran me like 30 or 40 bucks, kind of pricey for a big piece of plastic, but um, as you will find uh, common with Hobie accessories, they are very expensive. Um, so that's just kind of how it is. All right, two little quick things I want to talk about. Just kind of the structure of the Hobie itself. So you have this little elastic bungee here. And as you can see, you also have a paddle on this kayak too. 
At the end of the day, you have to remember, it is still a kayak. You can still paddle it just like any other kayak. It actually tracks really nice too. It's a little bit slimmer than my older Topwater 106. Um, so paddling this kayak has also been a joy as well. And as you can see, there's kind of this inset little body section here. You can just lay your paddle, clip it on, and you're good to go. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is this rectangular floor hatch. So this actually doesn't come standard on the Hobie Compass. Uh, what comes in that spot is actually this circular hatch. So what I did is I took the circular hatch out of this location, cut a hole up in the, the hull of the kayak up here, which there is kind of already a little pre-inset area that they want you to kind of cut out. Um, so move that circular hatch up here, and then I put this rectangular hatch in the floor, just had to cut it with a jigsaw, um, just a little bit more um, on the outside. You can see they give you this seal that goes around the edge. Um, and I've also added this little kind of flip up tackle organizer so I can get two little 3600 size boxes in there. And this is great just for, you know, quick stuff like my hooks or if I'm just going out with a couple of floors, I can basically just store all my hard tackle in there and I don't have to worry about messing around with tackle boxes. So it's a really great addition. Definitely recommend this one here. And last but definitely not least, let's talk about the anchor system on this kayak. So as you can see from the lettering there, this is the Anchor Wizard system. My dad actually showed this to me on the internet and he actually bought one for his kayak. And I was kind of skeptical at first until he got his system in and showed me how it worked. And then I was easily convinced. Um, as you can see here, we have this little tiny anchor and this is actually a pretty heavy sucker. It's like seven or eight pounds. It goes into this tube here, which is actually sliding on this rail. And then for the Hobie compass, had to get this kind of triangular mount. Um, the actual Hobie Outback has a little bit nicer mount that goes right up on the handle here. Kind of just wraps around the structure of the, the front of the kayak. Um, this is, you know, not as great of an approach, but it still works perfectly well. It's very stable. It's a nice big piece of metal. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how it works. So as you can see here, I put a, a little bit of uh, cushioning down on the floor just so I don't mess it up. And you can see this rope, it's actually paracord, runs all the way back to this little crank system here. So this is actually where all of the anchor rope is stored. You can see it coiled up in there. So it's tight right now. So what you do to drop it is you just give this basically a quarter turn to the left. Now I'm gonna move up here and I'm just gonna loosen it and I'll show you what happens. There you go. And as you can see, it automatically deploys. And if you're, I'm not sure exactly how much paracord there is, um, but basically, you know, once you get out of length that you want, come back here and you just tighten it up a little bit and that's it, you're good to go. So now what I'm gonna show you is kind of the, the process of just cranking it back up. And it's really that simple. And once it gets still about there, you'll see when I crank it up a little bit more, it flips up and it's locked into place. So this is a, a really cool system. I believe this was at iCast. I'm not sure what year, but I think I saw a YouTube video about it. Highly recommend this system. I've used it out on the water a couple times now, and it's really great, especially combined with this little anchor. Doesn't look like it would hold you, but it has held me and it, it, actually it's held me in some current too um, on a bigger little uh, river system. So can't recommend this enough. I've also added this little eyepiece here that I just mounted, uh, drilled a hole and then uh, got a nut up underneath there, which is a little bit tricky since that's kind of a tight spot. Um, but this is definitely recommended just to kind of keep your paracord guided. You don't want your paracord out getting tangled on your drive or in your line or something like that. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this kayak tour. I'm really excited to get it out in the water more and show you guys uh, me actually fishing on it. It's been a great little boat, uh, The kind of the two times that I've been out on it. It's been a joy to fish on. There is a lot of setup getting it in and out of the truck. It's definitely harder than the other kayak, um, but I really think it's worth it. Once you get out in the water, just being able to have your hands free since it's a pedal kayak instead of a paddle, that really makes all the setup worth it. Um, and, and you know, once you're out there, all these accessories, they really play nice together. It really gives you a good fishing experience out in the water. So if you guys do kind of enjoy this type of video, make sure to let me know in the comments. I'd love to do more of these. And if you have any questions about kind of how any of these systems work, just drop me a line and I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. So I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys out in the water.